uh, just bear with me a moment. There's some problem, some technical problems here, but I'm going to try to resolve it as fast as possible. And I'm going to use another mode of, uh, uh, you know, sharing the screen with you. Probably the basic mode is much better, save time. Okay, okay, we are waiting for you, no problem. Yeah, thank you. I'll share it in, in this way so it's easier and faster. Yeah. Okay, we finished with the definitions. And we were, okay, we went to write McMahon and I spoke about. The, okay, then we reached up to the SHRD mod, model. So now here, The SHRD model, I said the, there is traditional HRD model and strategic HRD model. And the benefits of traditional HRD model without we, we strategic human resource development model, that's what we are going to see now. And what is the implication of traditional HRD model? The one, the most important implication or the effect of the traditional HRD model is, or what happens in this model is basically employee education and training. And of course, upgradation of the skills. Next is training of external role players in the chain. Now, the external role players in the chain, for example, you have the supply chain and you have the, uh, like you have the subcontractors in a project. So sometimes what happens is, Okay, there's someone else trying to enter the class. Okay, so what happens is um, due diligence requires, okay, the system of due diligence requires that the, the even the contractors or the subcontractors that are associated with a particular business need to uh, comply with certain uh, it could be prob uh, probably certain laws or even, you know, they have certain compliances that has to be done uh, with respect to laws or even uh, import export regulations and so on. So uh, there is a system of due diligence there. And that is the reason, uh, you know, organizations sometimes seek to train even the external role players in the chain. Next is organizational development. Of course, you know what's organizational development. So that's what traditional HRD model basically concentrates on. Employee education training, training of external role players in the chain. I told you, I gave an example of contractors and subcontractors um, in the pursuit of due diligence, how organizations uh, you know, train the external role players, for example, contractors and subcontractors. Um, and ask them to align themselves with um, the, the laws that are there or uh, like export import regulations and so on. Or sometimes every country has its own uh, rule or own laws. And so sometimes they would ask the, the other company, which might be in some other country, they would ask them to comply with a particular law, which is required. I would not go into the details because that's not required for you, but I'm just trying to give you an example what really happens within the organization when it comes to the training of external role players in the chain. With experience, I'm talking this. So they ask for due diligence uh, uh, you know, reports and they ask for, um, you know, ask them to comply with, you know, uh, for example, they also ask for CSR, uh, you know, mandates of an organization. They ask them like, okay, what is your CSR mandate? Are you understanding me? And so on, okay. Next is um, of course the strategic model. Okay, the strategic HRD model. So now this concentrates on, of course, there is a kind of uh, you know a common uh, implication between the strategic HRD model and traditional model. And the most common thing between both of it is, of course, the empowerment of uh, employees and training them. The, what is different in this model is with they train them uh, with the knowledge of forthcoming problematic domains. Why? Because we said that strategic HRD is normally forward looking rather than current. 
So empowerment of employees with knowledge and training, of course, exists. But now they are trained in the present HRD, strategic HRD model. They are trained not only with respect to the current problems, but they're also trained with respect to the uh, what they anticipate in the future. That is the forthcoming problematic domains. Next is a swift exposure to development modules in each sphere. Next is swift learning, then flexible approach and future oriented. And it builds extrinsic and intrinsic job satisfaction. So it, it leads to you know job satisfaction for an employee externally in the sense it gives them an overall job satisfaction, like for example, in terms of benefits as well as their growth within the structure, personal growth of employees within the structure, because the, the employer that is the organization can also give them a boost by way of uh, uh, you know giving them uh, swift promotions uh, they have uh, these days if you have seen uh, you you can look around for even to banks when you go you see okay the best employee of the month so these kind of boosting techniques sometimes to use now next is What is the importance or the significance of strategic human resource development? What role it plays? It empowers the employees. It boosts employee participation. It encourages them and it encourages collaborative work. That is teamwork. It encourages collaborative work, teamwork. It helps the company to stay ahead. That means it forges the company ahead. Next is the HR department works as a powerhouse of strategic development process and aids in achieving organization goals. That means the HR department, like by boosting the morale of the employee also, by boosting uh, you know, the knowledge of the employee by arranging training programs, by encouraging teamwork, by encouraging collaborative work. So that means the HR department becomes a powerhouse of strategic development process and that in turn helps in achieving organization goals. So now, when we're studying strategic human resource development, we are studying from the perspective of the HR department and not from the perspective of the employee. So from the perspective of the HR department, so we understand that and the HR department works as a powerhouse of strategic development process and aids in achieving organization goals. How? by empowering the employees, by boosting employee participation, workers' contribution, by encouraging collaborative work or teamwork, that helps the company to be forged ahead or to stay, that forges the company ahead, or that helps the company to stay ahead. Next is the genesis, that is the beginning of SHRD. So it is observed by many authors such as James Greaves, that is, what we have provided you as a textbook, that SHRD has its roots in organizational development, what he calls as, as OD, and which is normally called as OD, organizational development. So strategic management with the objective of organizational development and achievement of organization goals, set the quest for, that means it set the ball into rolling, or set the wheels into motion, set the quest for, or the search for the strategic implementation of human resource planning and management. So the precursor that what really took off, what made it to take off is the precursor for organizational development has been globalization and as a means to achieve the end of expansion, the need for a trained human resources was cultivated. I'm sure you understand this. The precursor for organization development has been globalization. And as a means to achieve the end of expansion, for the organization, there was a need that was felt for training the human resources of an organization. So a company thinks of for itself that in case I need to have, a, you know, a, 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 I need to achieve globalization and enter the global market and have a competitive edge in the global market. So the precursor for that, for the organization development, has been globalization, I have that in mind. And as a means to achieve that end and expand my territories and expand my work globally, I need as a company 
trained human resources. So that was how it all began. The need, you see need as a mother of invention. So that's how it began. So conclusively in concurrence with the opinion of author James Greaves expressed in his book, Strategic Human Resource Development, that the six strategies are instrumental in bringing about an organization's efficiency that contributes towards the concept of SHRD is summarized or encapsulated here below. So he spoke about six strategies, which we have tried to, you know, uh, uh, try to uh, give it to you in a kind of a short form or in a constricted and an easy form. So the first thing he said, strategies, organizational divine has to be driven by core values and organization leadership in pursuit of excellence. So organization leadership should be in pursuit of excellence. That is, they need to have excellence. There is a pursuit of excellence, being the best in whatever they are and whatever they do. But that has to be driven by core values. Then next is, I said, leaders and managers. That means a manager should be a true leader. That, that means in a, lead, in a manager, there has to be a leader. So you see leaders and managers, and that is a strategy for excellence movement or achieving excellence or while you are in the pursuit of excellence, you will have to see that managers are trained to be leaders. That means a good manager is the one who gets the work done, who appreciates teamwork and gives the credit to the team and say, we have done it rather than I have done it. Or oh, I did it rather than saying I did it. He has to say, we have done it. So that is a true leader. So leaders and managers as a strategy for excellence movement. Next is strategic empowerment of workforce. Next is downsizing as a strategy for restructuring. Now downsizing, uh, I wouldn't say layoff exactly, but downsizing is where it can include layoff, but it is where the company restructures uh, the organization by probably shifting the employees to another department. And sometimes also by laying them off, you know, or terminating them and, you know, uh, trying to, uh, you know, cut short their expenditure. So therefore, sometimes the human resource develop, not sometimes, always, I would say rather, that human resources wing of every organization has to be careful while recruiting and put the right person at the right job and always see that a person is a resource and see a person as an investment and rather than an expenditure. So, so sometimes then the question of downsizing wouldn't really come unless there is certain problems you're going on in a company or you know the company has taken a uh, taken to a financial toss so that's where downsizing may be used as a strategy really however if everything is fine downsizing may uh, uh, in the in the form of layoff may not always be a good option however as a strategy for restructuring downsizing may be used and tom peters he proposed strategic lean stuff that is less stuff lean less stuff which means few layers of managers and reporting to upper levels. So these days, um, if you have really read about things, articles in business magazines, you might see that there are people who do not really appreciate micromanagement. So downsizing or lean staff or strategic lean management also would play an important role in strategic HRD, where there is probably one person who is handling a huge team and you know, there are a few layers of managers and uh, the, the reporting structure to upper levels. So that also would be a, you know, a good strategy in you know, restructuring the, the, the staff within an organization. Next is TQM, that is total quality management. I'm sure you've studied about this in other subjects. And next is the BPR, that is business process engineering with the aim of achieving quality enhancement. And the last one is strategic teamwork. I know you already know this, so just let's give me some five more minutes and we just brush through and we end the, end the class. Before that, I need to take your attendance as well. Next is what is human resource development? What are the components? What are the characteristic features? The characteristic features of strategic human resource development, even without looking, I'm sure you know that it involves strategic human resource planning. It is implementation, strategic implementation of 
plans and policies, what is devised with the aim of achieving the goals. It acts as a foundation for achieving organization goals. It is objective oriented and the future oriented mechanism. Then people are regarded as strategic resource of an organization as a tool or a weapon to achieve a competitive advantage and strategic authority accommodates environmental changes. Why? Because we said that it is future oriented. It anticipates and then it plans as it anticipates and you know gears itself up to what may take place in the future and the staff is trained accordingly so they adapt themselves to this to the anticipated change and strategize to adopt that change now what is the aim or the objective next the aim or the objective now you know what should be the aim or, or the objective of a strategic human resource what it is what it is and what should be even the aim of the human resource department the first aim should be strategic implementation of recruitment and onboarding that is when they take new staff so onboarding process is normally also in the form of orientation mm -hmm. programs and uh, you know uh, trying to equip them with the knowledge of the company and trying to tell them the procedures within the company trying to tell them about the hr manuals which are there and that's the onboarding process, of course. So strategic implementation of recruitment and onboarding. Next is studying the need of the organization and filling in the gap in human resources. That means there should be no empty positions. Next is training of the workforce and staff. Next is compliance with the relevant laws, such as labor laws, insurance of employees, et cetera. That means HR department in the process of strategic human resource, resource development, they'll have to keep themselves abreast with the latest developments in the relevant laws. What is relevant for the human resource, uh, you know, human resource uh, team or the human resource department is knowing the labor laws or the employment laws. I'm sure you know that there are employment laws, there is labor laws, and there are, com there are countries which ask for or, you know, mandate um, you know compulsory insurance policies to be taken by individual employee and it is the employer who gives the insurance to the employee sometimes the companies will insure the employees as a whole but there are company countries like uae which provide or even the sultanate of oman who provides where the where the law provides for the you know it mandates that the employers should provide health insurance policy, individual health insurance policy for its employees and depending upon, of course, the employees, the, the, the position and so on, the type of card that is given and that will also include their family members, their children and so on. And of course, they're, they're not going to the insurance part of it. So sometimes the laws mandate. So the HR department should also, uh, you know, you know, know about the relevant laws and comply with those laws. What happens if they don't comply? If they don't comply, of course, they, they'll, be, they'll be fines. And when there are fines again, it hits the organization. Again, what happens? Organizational goals, you lose sight of the goals. Again, what happens? I and mean, everything goes haywire. So in the strategic human resource process, the HR department should also comply with relevant laws, should know what other laws are applicable and keep abreast of it and keep uh, you know, track of the developments in the laws. Then be updated with the changes in the laws and mitigate risk. Next is it also aids in building a healthy work culture, resolving in-house conflicts. Now I want you to remember yeah, as my students basically that what is the meaning of conflict? I'll not ask you because I mean, it did take much time. So I just want you to remember here, many people sometimes get confused. Conflicts are the beginning of disputes. When it reaches the stage of disputes, then it is referred to, you know, sometimes within the organization, they will try to solve it, or sometimes it's referred to an external uh, structure such as courts. So, a good HR department will see that in-house conflicts are resolved before the conflicts are snowballed into the next stage of disputes. So long term, this is what I always advise uh, whoever, and this is always which I always keep repeating, is that conflicts, in-house conflicts should not be allowed to progress into disputes. So a good HR 
manager or a good, depending upon what kind of organization it is or who heads the HR department or department or HR executive, whoever, whoever is there, depending upon the size of the organization. So a good HR personnel, I'd rather use the word personnel, a good HR personnel would resolve in-house conflicts and will not allow it to fester and would try to obstruct the progression to a dispute. Next is long-term goal of facilitating organizational growth. Then it prevents workers' conflicts and employs a mechanism to avert disputes. That means avoid disputes, higher as per departmental needs, of course, depending upon what is the department. For example, there is a project department. So project department has to have a project head, it has to have a project manager, it has to have a project team, it has to have, it depends what kind of project. Suppose if it's a technical project, then you have technicians, engineers, and so on, I'm giving you an example. Next is hire, of course, as per department leads, an example I gave you. Next is study the company and its goals and strategically craft an HR plan. So that's what has to be really done in a good strategic human resources uh you know uh, as a tool they have to really craft it craft a, a proper hr plan which is aligned with the company's goals see that there are no loopholes try their best see that every position is filled see that no position is vacant for long see that conflicts are addressed see that oh, the departmental needs are you know uh well met see that they uh, they contribute towards building a healthy work culture and encourage healthy work culture and you know use different tools for building a healthy work culture like for example observing employees and giving them some small you know kind of prizes or uh giving them some kind of you know encouragement saying okay best employee or the most peaceful employee or you know the most cordial employee you know using such kind of um, techniques next is we have almost done it and this is all for our class so this was what i felt is uh you know something basic so next class we are going to go forward and see what the other chapters have in store for you so that's all for now if you have any questions you can ask me but before that let me just check your attendance okay so if you have any questions now before I go further, I want you to know that a student has to stay for the entire class. And that's again where attendance would be awarded. Just see the recording again and you will know what are the rules of the class for attendance. Further, it's left to the university's discretion. Let me take your attendance, please. Thank you for waiting and for bearing with the technical glitches that we experienced. Yeah, it, it, it will be Debra, Abdelita, Abdurraza, Abdullahi Omar, Ali Ahmed, Ali Hassan, Hassan Ther, yes. and uh, the last person is Nadino Hassan Ali. Okay, so you are there. So attendance will be granted to you. So see you next Wednesday, same time. Go through the recording so that you know like what it is exactly, like how you have to come to class and so on. Uh, pay attention to the assignment. Um, this is an easy subject. Attendance sheet. Um, uh, I'll Thank you. What you follow there, but you can ask your class representative for the attendance sheet, but I have my- Thank you, teacher. Thank you. I take the attendance in this manner and then I incorporate it in my attendance sheet and I submit it to the university as for like who has attended like a kind of authenticated from my side but um you can ask your class representative for the attendance sheet and probably you can sign it there uh, i really i'll not go into like, what people do exactly okay so that's it from my side and uh, see you next class and we'll go to the third chapter there okay bye and it was nice knowing you all and it was wonderful interacting with you Bye. Thank you, Madam. Bye. I hope I hope that we shall take uh, the course like this, time, right? Yeah. Uh, I'm, sorry. Yeah. I'm sorry. Come again. Come on. I hope that 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 we shall take the class like this time. Yes. 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 Y
eight, eight o'clock in the morning. Yes, it's going to be same. For my class, I would like to reiterate, as it is mentioned, it will be 8 a.m. in the morning every, every Wednesday, HRD class, every Wednesday, 8 a.m. in the morning, same time. There may not be any reminders, but I want you to be present there. Okay, eight, okay, okay, yeah, thank you. Eight o'clock, the Zoom is going to start. It may be even five minutes earlier, but I'm going to start the Zoom at eight. Sometimes, God forbid, there's some problem. It can take to eight, five, and I understand even that could be on your part. So I would allow, allow five minutes. After the five minutes, by 8.05, max 8.06, we are going to start the class. Uh -huh. Okay, Students thank you. will be granted for everyone who comes to class by 8.15, 15 minutes buffering time. Uh, mute your mic, please. 15 minutes buffering time. And then towards the end of the class, I would see all who are there, even in the beginning of the class, after 15 minutes, I'm just going to run through, which I, you may not be aware, who are the students. I, I mean, I'll be uh, noting it in my mind, who's entering the class and what time. And then towards the end of the class, I'm going to take the attendance. And then accordingly, I'm going to award the attendance. So that's simple as that. That's it. But it's going to be every week. In case there is not going to be a class, you will be well informed in advance. Okay? Thank you. Thank you. Yeah, welcome. Bye-bye. See you next class. Next Wednesday. Bye-bye. See you next Wednesday. Bye-bye. Okay, thank you. Welcome. Bye-bye.